Hi friend, look what came in the mail. All right, let's get this project buttoned up. All right, friends, I'm gonna go hand channel today. First, let's see what's in our package. It's like we got a sticker. All right. And a purple candy. Hmm. I'm on keto. That's going to go out. That's nice of them, though, isn't it? But here's what we're waiting for. These are our three PCBs. All right. Let's get started with soldering. Have my Hiko FX888D warming up. It's no problem doing this with a regular soldering iron. It's just that I found that it was a revelation for me when I finally got a, a proper soldering station. Uh, you can control the heat a lot better and it's just just a much better experience so that's what I'm gonna go with today all right here's what I'm gonna do first I'm gonna put in the, the resistors first because they're the lowest and the diode not the LED we're gonna wait for last for that then I'm gonna put the capacitors in First I'll do the box ones, then the electrolytics, and then we'll do the switch and the potentiometer. All right, let me collect everything and I'll be right back. All right, friend, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on my list that I printed out. It was my uh, bill of materials, and I'm gonna grab my 470 ohm, 470k ohm resistor. I check them every time, make sure they're the right item. It's within tolerance, and I go. F I do the resistors first because they're lower. I like to pull this through, and what I do is I get some isopropyl alcohol. And I like to clean that solder pad real, real well. I clean the lead too. Now there is flux, rosin core flux in the solder itself. But I like to make it clean before I even start. You got to get this going here. Feed some solder in there. And you want to heat up that pad first. Get the heat flowing, not just the lead. You'll see that, don't move the leads while they're uh, cooling either. You'll see that there's a nice fillet of solder on there. And once you cut them off, looks real nice and shiny if you move the lead while it's cooling you could get a cold solder joint it's, a lot of times it won't cause any problems but it's just something you don't want all right what I'm gonna do is fast forward this while I'm soldering the rest of the resistors in Soldering is all about heat transfer. You don't want to get too much, but if you get too little, you'll have problems. When you're soldering two pads that are close to each other like that, Sometimes you get a little solder bridge that goes between them. 
best thing to do is just once you cut the leaves off let's do that first you could just run the soldering iron clean it off and run it between the two and drag it out and that'll usually get the uh, solder bridge out of there when you have vias like we made on this board you have to be particularly careful when they're close to a solder pad to make sure you don't get anything across them as well sometimes they're really hard to see all right let me continue with the resistors All right, now we're going to move to our diodes. Okay, you'll notice on the diodes where there's a little line. That's your uh, cathode, and the line on the diode matches up with it. Some people like to add flux along with their rosin core, but I don't find it necessary. Sometimes when you're grounding potentiometers, it helps. Like inside of a guitar, people even then don't recommend it. Now we're going to save these nice thick leads off these diodes. We're going to need one of those later. Got our germanium diode. You have to be very careful with these germanium diodes. When you bend the leads, very easy to crack the glass casing. All right, there's your diodes. We're going to go with the box capacitors next. All right, I'm going to grab the electrolytics now. You'll see how uh, the electrolytics have a longer lead and a shorter lead. The shorter lead is always on the, the negative stripe. So what you're going to do is put the longer lead through the square on the PCB. We're going to put our transistor. This is my 2N. 388. Yeah, that's a good one. As you'll see, it fits right in there. It's already oriented. So we're just going to put these leads through and solder them up. I like to leave a little extra space uh, so, that, so that the heat doesn't get to the transistor itself. That's a pricey item. It's more than a, a penny. See, I like to leave it off the board a little bit. All right, I think we are ready to do our wiring. So let's get that done. All right, here's what I like to do. I like to cut short strips of wire. And I have one of these that strips off just the end. It's really nice to have. You don't have to worry about taking too much off. And these are going to be my power. That's going to go right there. So you don't need much wire. And I like to twist it. This isn't for any other reason but to take up less space. So we'll leave that there. And we'll get moving. Let's see here. You'll see I solder them to the other side of the board from the components. Just keep them out of the way. I try to stick to conventions. I use green for input, yellow for output. Uh, I use blue, light blue for uh, the LED. Just try to stick to things like that and it always helps you out so you don't get confused when you're putting things together. All right.
All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our potentiometer in. Now I ordered one with these clips on. I didn't make the board so it fits one of those, but it's not really important. You could clip these off if they get in the way, but the way we made this with it hanging off the edge looks just right. So let's get that soldered in there. Now remember, when you're soldering these components to the board, there's plastic parts on here. There's stuff inside that can melt. Now we're leaving enough space for a heat sink right here, so it shouldn't be a problem. But when you get to your switches, there is a, a limit to the amount of heat they could take. So you don't want to just let it cook on there. And since, you have, since I have a digital here, I have it set to 750, which is a little high, but it melts fast and I get on and off quick. A lot of these have a, a limit of, uh, right, what is it, right around 650 Fahrenheit, I believe. All right, now this is going to be a trick because it's all in the middle of all these components, but we could do it. Let's give this a good cleaning first. All right, let's stick this in there. Ah, this is going to be a trick. I have one of these I like to use sometimes. I'll squeeze the component in there and then put the PCB on it and let gravity hold it together. Now you'll see the potentiometer, the switch, and the LED are all going to be on the underside of the board. That's how we made it. Now these switches definitely are sensitive to heat. You don't want to cook them. It's also harder to leave space between them and the board like we could for the transistor. Because these have to be on the right spot when you screw everything together. I'll show you when I'm done with this. All right, if you're worried about it, the best thing to do is to solder this one first, then go to the farthest one, and go to this one, and then this one, and then give you some time between these two. Let's just get that soldered in there well. All right. I also like to twist these ones together so I don't get it mixed up which one's which. Which ground goes with which? They're all equivalent electrically, so it doesn't matter so much. All right, we are going to drop this into the enclosure. Now you'll see how these will be on the same plane, so you could screw them in together. Sometimes I like to take this off. because It really doesn't provide much support. And we'll go from there. Let's get our LED first. Well, let's pick one out of the box here. Let's decide on a color. All right, here's what you're gonna do. You're going to put this in. The long lead goes on the box, on the square. And when we set this in here, we're gonna bring it through just so it comes through that hole we made for it. Then we're going to solder it into here. That way it's exactly the right height that we need and we don't have to worry about it. All right. All right, before we box this up, I 
have this old enclosure that I drilled too many times, uh, messed up a couple times, so I figured I'd use it for a test box. You see I have a 9 volt in, in and out, in and out. This one's in, this one's out. So let's power this up, see what happens. All right, see I have red for 9 volt, black for ground. This is where my conventions come in. I have green for input, so that goes to my green clip, and yellow for output. This blue one is my LED, and you'll see when I connect it to ground, the LED illuminates. That's a good sign. What we're going to do is plug a guitar into it. Now what I usually do is screw this to usually the underside of my desk. Um, but I just moved to this desk so I don't have it attached yet uh, because you'll see it move. And if you grab your guitar and pull this, it pulls the whole circuit out of the, down to the ground. So we're just going to be careful right now. I'll put, I'll put my heavy solder right there so it doesn't move. All right. Let's turn on this guitar and see what happened. Okay, here's my bypass sound. And here's the treble booster. That's with the beef mod. You can see how it takes out a lot of the bass, but it gives it a lot of clarity too. It also boosts the sound. It's really hitting the front end of my Marshall DSL. Especially when you consider that this is the bypass. All right, let's try this. Here's the beef. That's all through the clean channel of my amp. I don't have the amp mic'd up, it's just all through my lapel mic right now, so it's not going to sound great, but you'll get the idea. All right, let's get this boxed up since it's working. All right, I'm going to probably do this mostly in fast motion, but uh, we're going to try to get this all squeezed into this tiny little box. Let's give it a go. All right, I'm going to get this all wired up. All right, let's get this in the box. All 
this goes on the inside don't forget to put this in first through here and through here all right we're going to prepare our switch i'm going to put it in here and we're going to take that lead that we saved from our diode and what we're going to do is we're going to put it from the middle lead to the bottom right okay see how i got that in there okay next step is we're going to stick it in this so we get this all soldered up in fact we're going to put everything together right now all right we're going to put this switch into here but first we're going to put all the jacks in first okay you'll notice you'll do some mistakes sometimes you'll put things on the wrong side I think I did that, but we'll fix it. We'll just switch them around. And after I get these put back in, I have a lead from the input and output that goes, it's gonna to go to the switch that's here and here. And I have the leads that go to the jacks here and here. So let's just put this little washer on there. Get this screwed down tight. There we go. I see we have it in there. Now we're going to start the soldering. All right. You get a little messy in there sometimes. Not a big deal. All right. First, we're going to put the LED in. It goes over here. This is the LED wire. It's going to go right here to this one here. And then this one's going to go to the ground, which is anywhere on the case or one of these here. One of these white wires at the bottom. All right. All right. We can test that if you want. We have the LED wire soldered to this lug here and this lug is going to go to ground which is anywhere that's ground we could go up to here on the black lead or we could just come off of one of the ground leads off of the jack which is what I'm going to do because it's closer. All right, let's test the LED. All we have to do is plug it in. And the switch should turn it on. Perfect. All right, this is the output. So this is going to go over to here. We don't really need this much wire. So we're going to cut it here. That's going to go here. And the output jack is going to go right below it. Input from the circuit is going to go Oh, I did this wrong. All right, you make mistakes all the time. So we're going to take this little wire back out that we worked so hard to get in there. All right. So I got it in the wrong spot. All right. 
So we'll grab another one of these leads. And this is going to be hard to get in. Because it goes from here to here, not to this one. All right, let's try it. All right. The input goes to the center lug. All right. One more lead we got to bend and put in that between those two right there. It's a lot easier when it's outside of the circuit. <laughs> a lot easier. All right. All right. Ultimately, you'd like to get these two jumper wires in there beforehand. But here we are. What you want to do first is we're going to call this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for the lugs. You have a jumper from two to nine and one from seven to eight. The input from the outside of the pedal goes to jumper nine, goes to lug nine. The output from the pedal goes to lug six. The LED minus goes to lug number one. Lug number four goes to ground. Lug number five goes to the input of the circuit. Lug number three goes to the output of the circuit. That should take care of all the lugs that you need there. All right, let's plug it in and make sure everything's working. Okay, I got the level cranked on the treble booster. I have it in the original mode. And this is my clean sound on the Marshall. And this is what it sounds like. Still on the green channel.
volume control on the guitar. You'll notice that it has an effect on it because it's a germanium transistor. That's just with the volume control on the guitar. It reacts to it rather well. Um, very glad that we didn't have to do anything with the mods. Uh, the capacitors are a little bit big on the input and output for the beef mode. Puts a lot of, a lot of bass on it. happy with it I'm happy with how this turned out really happy you see I added the knob and makes it look nicer um, really happy with the mod it exceeded my expectations I probably would change the value from one uh, microfarad probably go 0.5 maybe it's worth experimenting um, I did make a mistake in the schematic and in the PCB just minor things I'm gonna go over those in the next video and talk about a few things that I would change but I'm happy I hope you're happy too thanks for stopping by I really appreciate it I'll see you next time